Hi, uh, my, my name is Barry Brebner and I am a born-again child of God. I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior and um, that happened when I was 16 and I would just like to share with you um, sort of a little testimony of uh, how that happened and how um, what changed in my life and um, so I was born in Wingham, Ontario, Canada um, and I grew up out in the country. I had a happy childhood and uh, my parents taught me Christian values even though I don't believe that they are saved. Uh, my grandmother I believe was a Christian and taught my mom um, Christian values and that she passed on to me. Um, so she taught me not to steal, not to lie, not to swear, um, to be nice to people and uh, things like that. Um, even though uh, when I was, as I was growing up I would sometimes do mean things to people and say mean things and sometimes it was for the approval of others or to gain uh, like friendships or whatever with people I would insult other people to um, be liked by other people um, and I would also do things and say things um, just for my own enjoyment um, or or other reasons um, and hurt people and I felt really kind of bad for all those things I wasn't a completely bad child I mean I was also did good things you know I wasn't totally bad but all the things that I did do bad um, the worst being that that I would say one of the worst things I ever did um, was uh, dragging my brother down the stair steps um, and his head would like bounce off each step and then at the bottom of the stairs um, and my, I had a friend over and we like got a camera and took pictures of him after he was like at the bottom of the stairs like lying there and crying and we were like taking pictures and I that's one of the worst things that I ever did and um, I felt really bad for that and I still feel bad for it and um, and I started smoking marijuana when I was 13 and and as soon as I started doing that my life just went downhill and I sort of started I, I isolated myself and I uh, I and was just being alone and smoking marijuana and then also was into pornography and uh, but uh, and I got really depressed about things of the world and how the I see the world as being destroyed and polluted and that really concerned me and another thing was that I didn't want to be a part of it I didn't want to take part in destroying the world and I didn't want to be I didn't want to be bad anymore. I didn't want to do bad things, and um, so I heard about Jesus, and um, I I read the Bible. I got a Gideon's Bible when I was in school. Um, praise the Lord! Thank God that they were handing out Bibles in schools, but they don't anymore in Canada. They're outlawing that. They uh, we got a lot of people in power that don't believe the truth. Christ is the truth. Um, I mean, I, I find it hard to believe that people, if they read the Bible, not to see how true it is, because the words are just alive, you know. The words are just so truthful. And, and they're living words. They're the words of life. They come from the life giver. And the life giver, what he speaks, is a living word. So... Um, I read the Bible, I heard the message of salvation on the TV, um, and uh, I believed it, and I repented of my sins. I don't want to do bad. I hate doing bad. I turned away from sin, and I turned to Christ, and I asked Christ, I invited Jesus into my life to wash away all my sins, as he says he is able to do. I asked him to do it. I believed it and I asked and he did. And at my grandma's funeral, I was 16, um, is when he came in the Spirit and he baptized me with the Holy Spirit. I received the gift of the Holy Spirit 
the Spirit of God that dwells inside of me and I felt all my sins washed away. I felt myself being purified and that the burden of sin, the weight of sin and guilt that I was carrying around that I didn't even know I had and I didn't even know it had a weight. It was weighing me down. I felt it lifted. I felt my sins washed away, forgiven. I I felt the Holy Spirit inside of me and my body was tingling and I felt like I was just going to lift right out, right up out of the pews at my grandma's funeral. And it wasn't because of something that was said at the funeral. It was even before the funeral had totally started. Me and my cousins, we were all lined up my grandma's, at my grandma's casket and, uh, and my cousins ahead of me were just walking by and kissing my grandma on the forehead so I just sort of followed suit and I had prayed before this to receive Christ as my Savior like a day or two or a week before a couple times and and my cousin ahead of me she she kissed my grandma on the forehead and a teardrop fell from her eye and I was right behind it and I kissed my grandma on the forehead on this teardrop and it's to be some people think it sounds so weird but as soon as I did that, I received the Holy Spirit of God, and God came in Christ's form, in the Spirit, and washed me, and clean, cleansed me, and freed me from sin. And I had no idea that was going to happen. I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know I was going to receive the Holy Spirit, and it was an amazing experience. And and the whole and I didn't at first realize what was going on, and and then. But the Holy Spirit inside of me revealed to me that it was the Holy Spirit. Like, it's, 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 a, it's an amazing thing how it's the Spirit of truth. The, the Holy Spirit tells and witnesses and speaks the truth. So without even reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit can teach um, the truth about Christ and about everything that's true, God and the truth about God and uh, can teach um, teach the truth and teach you what is not true so by listening to the Holy Spirit you can know what is not true so after I got saved um, I, I was really zealous I wanted to do everything that God wanted me to do the commandments the, the laws even um, I didn't I didn't, uh, I was just a, born, a new Christian, but I wanted to do everything that God wanted me to do. I didn't want to do anything wrong. I didn't want to conform to the ways of the world. Um, and, uh, and I told my parents, like, you know, I want to be a disciple. And this was after I saved, after I was saved. And they said, no, you can't do that. <laughs> Even though I already was, but they said, no, you can't. And they didn't support me, and I didn't have any real Christians around for support. Um, most of my friends, my parents' friends, are are not Christians, and uh, and if they are, they don't talk about it. Or any of my family, if they are, they don't talk about it either. So, um, so yeah, I was kind of all alone as a Christian, and uh, and. Um, I had like I had this breakdown like all these people were telling me you have to do this you have to do that I didn't want to grow up and be an adult I wanted to just be a kid you know and 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 I and as far as I'm concerned I'm still a child and I don't consider myself to be an adult and nor do I want to consider myself to be an adult because I think adults are immature really or they're they think they're adults, but really they're not. I don't know. They're just. It. I don't know. It's just like. I don't want to be an adult. I'm just a child. I like to think like a child and act like a child and and feel like a child. Um, I don't want to grow up and think I'm all mature and think I'm all know it all and think I'm so like take care of myself and blah blah blah. It's just like. Um, I'm just a child of God. Forget about being an adult, forget about driving a car and owning a house and forget about like going to school and learning this silly education and paying all this money for an education and trying to earn lots of money and trying to buy lots of stuff and 
forget about all that stuff. It's just a bunch of nonsense, and it's the way of the world. So, um, but yeah, I, I didn't want to do all that stuff, and people says, oh, you got to do that, you know, that's what you got to do, and if you think otherwise, people don't understand, they think you're insane. So, uh, and anyways, I ended up in the psychiatric system, and they would tell me I'm delusional, and I didn't, I, I didn't believe it, and I never did, and, and I still don't, and look at me, I'm fine, so, uh, I'm not on any medications, even though I was, I was on ODSP, they said I couldn't work, they said I couldn't take care of myself, I was in a group home, I gained, like, 100 pounds, I was, so I was, like, overweight, um, I was drugged, I was not working, I was, like, zombified from my drugs, I couldn't think properly, and, uh, little by little, though, God helped me up, step by step, it's, it was like, uh, it was like little baby steps, little tiny, it's like, I had to, I had to, like, learn how to crawl, that's how down I was, I was so down and out, that I was, like, just, I had to learn to crawl, and then take little baby steps, one step at a time, and choices, make good choices, just one good choice at a time, and life changes, and gets better, and I got a job, I started working full time, I got off my medication, which I weaned myself off, because the doctors, if you try to ask them to take you off medication, they'll just give you more, and, uh, and you gotta, anyone that's it's having, uh, what they call mental health problems, it's, it's all about, uh, your mind, how you think. So, and it talks about in the Bible, the renewing of your mind. So you got to control your mind in order to, if you want to go off medication, you have to have self-control, and you have to control your thoughts, and, and think rationally. So if you're getting paranoid, or, you know, or you're thinking that you're Jesus, or you're thinking that you're whatever, um, just think rationally, okay, like you're, we're not Jesus, okay, we're, we have sin, um, and as far as paranoia, just think rationally, you know, nobody's out to get us, the devil is out to get us, so it, it is understandable why people get paranoid, because the devil is out to destroy us and kill us, but you don't have to worry, because we are children of God, and God is stronger than the devil, and, uh, God will take care of us, and not to worry, so, um, but if you person gets paranoid, just, um, just think rationally. And, and to go off medication, you have to have control of your mind. So if you can control your mind and control your thoughts, then you can, um, you can go off your medication, but you have to have self-control. And, uh, so I, I also got off, I also lost 80 pounds. Well, first I lost 50, and then I gained back 80, and then I lost 80. And then I pretty well kept it off for quite a few years. I've been not on any medication for about uh, eight, I think it's eight, eight years. Yeah, eight years I haven't been on any medication. I've been off ODSP, which is a disability support program for people that don't work. I've been off that for ten years, over ten years. And, uh, and uh, I bought a house, but I felt by God to sell it, so I sold that, got rid of all my possessions, I have very few possessions, and I have all I need and more, God provides, and even if I have, like, no money, or, God still takes care of me, I still get fed, I'm still alive, and I've been safe all my life, God has kept me safe through, uh, many trials and many dangers, God has kept me safe. And God will keep you safe too. God has kept you safe so far. Why? Why wouldn't He take care of you in the future? So, um, I mean, even when I had my house, I eventually I just canceled my house insurance. I was like, well, if my house burns down, what am I worried about? God will take care of me. And my house didn't burn down. The house was like over a hundred years old. Never burned down in a hundred years. Why is it going to burn down now? But anyways, that's just insurance. Like, we have assurance. We don't need insurance. We have assurance of God and God's um, power and protection over us. We don't need insurance. That's worldly. It's We trust in our money. You don't have to trust in money. Trust in God. You know? 
Do you not think that if you are a believer, can you not believe that God will take care of you? And can you not trust in God? Are you trusting in your money? Or are you trusting in God? Um, I'm guilty of uh, putting my trust in money. Um, can't say I'm not. But uh, I have um, also, I've been freed from the bondage of money. And wanting money and building up lots of money and 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 it's a very liberating experience just to give it all away so I highly recommend just giving all your money and giving everything away and just trusting in God and seeking God and doing his will it's great to be a vessel that is um, open and willing to do the will of God and to be an instrument of God a tool of God to do what God wants to do um, for others. It's just, it's great to be, and an honor to be that. So if you are lacking uh, a purpose or fulfillment in your life, um, just turn your life over to God and allow God to use you as He wills, and your life will be very enriched and you will have you will feel a purpose and meaning and you will be filled with joy and you will praise God and it's and filled with love and peace and it's so so God's so wonderful um, you are so wonderful too that's why Christ died for us because he loves us because we are his children and he did not create his children to not be wonderful he created us we are wonderfully made so you are a wonderful person, you are loved, you are beautiful, you are just, you're just awesome. So don't think that you're not. Um, you are a great person, God loves you, you are uh, apple in the eye of God, you are a beautiful flower. So um, God bless you, hope you have a glorious day, in Jesus name, God bless you, in love. Bye for now.